So maybe you've bred your rabbits and you're eagerly awaiting that first litter and I know how exciting that can be. So we're gonna talk about when's the right time to introduce that box. Now your rabbit gestation period is gonna be from 28 to 34 days. That's a traditional time. Sometimes they, they have their litter a little later or sooner, but traditionally your rabbit's probably going to have her litter on day 31 or 32. So it's important to introduce that nesting box on day 27, 28, 29 at the latest, because really she could have that litter uh, sooner. So be sure to, to introduce a nesting box. And in the summertime, we'll use a nesting box with a screen bottom. This is a galvanized nesting box. And this nesting box is pretty old. It's about 10 years old and they're pretty durable. This is galvanized and this is just a screen bottom. And this is great for summertime because they really benefit from the, the ventilation. But if it's wintertime and we use this galvanized nesting box, we'll line the walls with like a pot box cardboard or a beer box cardboard. We'll work um, even like an Amazon box cardboard because the, the metal gets so cold if the litter gets pushed up against it they can get chilled and you don't want that. Also the floor in the winter time we put down a little piece of quarter inch Luan and to, to create a barrier from the cold because the litter will move around and then push those chips around and you don't want them to be exposed to the, the elements. So just use a piece of Luan or a piece of cardboard and in the winter time we'll put down a little bit more uh, shavings. So here's more of a traditional wood nesting box. We built this on another video, and I'll put the video up in the corner if you wanna see that. These are really simple to make. This, we just made this with half inch plywood. It rained last night and all this stuff was left out, so it kinda of got wet. So in the summertime, we'll put down a piece of paper, we'll put down about an inch of wood shavings, and then we'll put uh, maybe three, four handfuls of straw in there. And I'll try to create an, a cavity in the back, but mama will really tear up this nesting box and, and make it herself. I just like to do that because I like her to poke her head in there and say, well, hey, there's a good place to make a litter. You'll notice that no matter how nice you make it, they'll, and they make really cool nests too. It'll look just like a bird's nest once they're done. A nice cavity, perfect place to have a litter. We breed rabbits right through the hot temperatures. And when you do, these screen floor bottoms are really beneficial. But in the winter time, we absolutely are covering this with some Luan or some thick cardboard. So summertime is only one inch of shavings and wintertime is about three inches of shavings. I have a video from a couple years ago where I was making up a bunch of nesting boxes. Let's cut away to that real quick. We'll see how we make a nesting box. You'll notice that mama stays on her side of the cage in the nest. She doesn't really spend any time with the litter. She'll only nurse her litter a couple of times a day for a few minutes. And it's really hardwired into them because rabbits are prey animals and you know they're really getting hunted from, from the sky and the ground and they don't wanna draw any attention to that litter. Even if a kit gets pulled out of the nesting box, uh, holding onto mama's teeth for a little bit too long and she got pulled out, it's not mama's instinct to sit there and nurse that litter or, or cover that, that kit. She's actually gonna let that kit expire over on the other side of the cage because Again, they don't want to draw any attention to that litter. So they'll actually go away from the, the litter box. Rabbits bury their litters and then they'll go somewhere else to make sure there's no predators that are being drawn to that, that area. Wild rabbits will dig a cavity in the ground, have their litter, and then cover it. The air that's trapped in that little pocket, the baby rabbits really don't need a lot of oxygen. They don't use a lot of oxygen. They're really just clustering together underneath a ball of fur. And all the oxygen that's trapped in that little cavity, that hole, uh, they're gonna be just fine. Mama will return twice a day to only nurse for a few minutes and then quickly cover it. That rabbit will expire on the other side of the cage because it's not mama's instinct to hang out with the nest or save rabbits that have ventured out of that uh, that cave or that, that cavity. If mama tried to take care of that rabbit, that would make her vulnerable. She knows that that is a predator situation and she can't risk the health of that, that litter. You'll know when the litter arrives because you'll come out and you'll see a little ball of fur 
uh, moving on top of the nesting box. Hopefully mama pulled fur and she's covered the litter. Now if it's a really hot day, she may not have pulled fur because that, that litter can actually overheat because just them clustering is gonna keep that litter about 100 degrees. And if you're living in Texas, you know that's not gonna be good for the rabbits to be covered in fur when it's 120. So um, you know things are just a little different depending on what time of year it is. But the rabbits won't do much other than just nurse with mama. You know, mama's milk may come in right away it may take a couple days so try not to get too worried uh, because the rabbits may be a little skinny at first because mama hasn't had a chance to, to feed them but really at this point all you can do is just leave it up to mama because if you get in there and you start messing with things that may make things worse your mama may not learn as fast and even though if there's a couple losses that's gonna make her a better mama on the next round so so just try to leave it up to her the best thing you can do though is make sure that she's got fresh water make sure she's got some whole oats something with a higher fat content that's gonna help lactation some folks feed a higher protein but protein really isn't gonna help lactation so what can you do for mama to improve her lactation to help these kits be sure to double her feed portions double her feed portions. I will feed a mama doe two cups of pellet a day. On top of that, three times a week, I'm gonna give her a punch of whole oats or black oil sunflower seeds. I'm gonna give her fresh water twice a day, plantain, clover, if there's any available. Because I would recommend giving her a treat, giving her something to chew on and munch on while you slide the nest box over and you inspect the litter. You're gonna wanna inspect the litter at least twice a day to make sure that there's no expired kits because you wanna make sure you remove them because it can start to smell like roadkill. You wanna remove those expired kits. Um, you're really gonna have to take a quick look because they could be warm even though it's expired because that cluster is so warm. So be sure to remove those. Really, you just have to come out and inspect the litter, make sure that there's no kits that have been pulled out of the nesting box. Put them right back into the cluster if you do. But the nesting box is gonna be needed for at least two weeks. We'll turn it on its side like this and we'll, and we'll have to remaneuver the cluster so it's now sitting down on this level. But once, once the nesting box is turned, the kits will start to move in and out. They'll go over to the water, they'll taste some of the pellet, and they'll eventually slowly start to nurse less and less till eventually, you know, right about four weeks is when mama's milk starts to dry up, but eventually right around weaning time, um, you know, not a lot of them are still nursing. But two weeks we turn it on its side and then three weeks we'll remove it all together. And once we remove it, we put in our hide boxes. This is our, our little kit hide boxes that we'll keep in there for about, oh, I would say at least a month until eventually we put in a full size hide box. Hide boxes are really beneficial to the rabbits because they're very nervous by nature. And you know, being able to run in there, even if it's a false sense of security, being able to run and hide behind the wall like that, it really calms them down. Their hearts just pound and you know, rabbits can have heart attacks because they're just such nervous nillies. So be sure to, to introduce a hide box. If you'd like to see how we build a hide box, I'll put a video up in the corner these are really simple this is just made out of one by four and uh, some three-quarter so one more thing I want to add that the baby rabbits their stomachs really need to be inoculated before they even have any solids so they'll be drinking mama's milk and they'll also be nibbling on cecotropes that's one of the two different kinds of fecal matter that rabbits make and is actually packed with nutrients for the baby rabbits to eat this helps inoculate their stomach and then they can start to have solids the worst thing you can do though is just pack on a bunch of greens for these baby rabbits as soon as they start hopping out of the nesting box avoid that because it can make them sick and it's probably gonna kill them because they're not ready for that yet they, they really if you want to give them some sort of greens you can give them parsley so in the winter time we'll turn the nesting box at two weeks but we'll actually leave it in there for a couple more weeks just because it's so cold and that nesting box on its side is kind of a nice area for them to, to nestle up and stay warm um, it's just really cold and that's just something we do different in the winter time so we'll remove that nesting box about four weeks instead of three weeks so we've talked about the traditional nesting box setup so in the beginning we noticed how difficult it was to breed through the coldest parts of the winter and the hottest times of the summer. And we wanted to create a way where, for one, we could avoid our rabbits from heat stress, and two, we could keep our rabbits comfortable and we could kindle litters in those type of elements. So I wanna show you what we came up with years ago. We have several videos on this, but we're talking about nesting boxes, so we, we have to talk about our kindling totes. So notice how our cages have a back door. So our cages have this back door and from time to time when we need to inspect our rabbit or we need to move our rabbit, we will simply just place this in the cage and that way they can't get out and it's a really simple system. So what they do is they come down the ramp and they have their own six inch tile that goes into a tote that's connected by great stuff. 
Now, if you're interested in building one of these kindling totes, they're surprisingly simple to build. They will last about five years before they need to be resealed and they'll start to let rain in. This is a terrific system which taps into the natural instincts of rabbits wanting to burrow and kindle their litter and keep things safe. We never have any problems here in Michigan with snakes or uh, ferrets or we don't really have anything other than raccoons and the raccoons will not invest enough energy to dig through these things. We keep all the food and the water up in our cage and we don't have any problems with predators down here trying to get the litters or anything. Sprinkle some DE when we're building the nest so it keeps the insects out. But you don't want to overdo the diatomaceous earth powder because the rabbits will breathe that in and that's not good for them. So just a little bit goes a long way. You'll see that mama rabbit doesn't like what we're doing. She had her first litter in this kindling tote and I want to show you uh, what her first litter, it's only a few rabbits, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. Look at their chunky little butt. Oh my goodness, what a cutie. So this is a small litter, so they're getting lots and lots of milk and that's why they're so big. Mama's first litter. Now look at all the dirt that she pulled in too. That's pretty weird. But let's look at another one. So why we did this was I wanted the rabbits to have something more natural to kindle in. I watched too many rabbits get pulled out of the nesting box in the winter time and that's what we avoid with this system. These totes are a terrific way to raise your rabbits. It's just important that every five years, like I said, approximately five years, you're going to need to reseal these tiles and these totes or there's the water will get in or the snow will melt and it will get into the tote and you certainly don't want that. And I seen an old sketch of a European rabbitry that was built by a hill and they will tunnel out of the back of the hutch into this hill. So this system is somewhat like that where these rabbits can escape the elements when it's really hot, when it's really cold, it's always going to be a little bit more comfortable in these totes. So I like to put a nice corrugated top on it or some sort of insulated top with some plywood. Let the rabbits kindle in these totes. We'll let them nurse their litter for around approximately 10 days, 10 to 12 days, and then we collect them in this nesting box. This is our design for nesting box for day 10 to 12. The reason why we remove them and put them in a different cage is because that way we can inspect them. We run a rabbitry where we sell a majority of our rabbits and we need to be able to make sure those rabbits are 100% healthy. So I just wanted to share the rabbitry center system. Folks all over the country are using this system now. Really excited about it. I do not sell these or anything like that. I just want to share it with you. I hope it helps you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.